All right, <laughs> the moment has come. This is the blues swab uh, addressing the issue that I have been crusading against for, I don't even know, two, three years now. It's been a long time. Uh, it appears to be the focus of this. DMG tweeted that this was going to be um, covered here. We don't know when it's taking effect, but I wanted to record my kind of live reactions to this because this has been my personal crusade <laughs> for so long here. And there are many answers to this problem that I would consider at least somewhat acceptable. So we will see what they have to uh, offer here. This week at Bungie, we're sweeping up some blues. Time's been flying, hasn't it? Including the article you're reading today, just five twabs stand between you and the Witch Queen. We don't yet have the technology to enter a hypersleep that can bridge these gaps, but we do have the power to set some expectations on topics we'll be covering between now and then. This week, we'll be talking about power, blue drops, gunsmith reputation, some shifts in exotic sources, and more. Over the next few twabs, we'll be talking Vanguard rep, Gambit reworks, weapon crafting, Void 3.0, not necessarily in that order. That is a lot. Don't forget the patch note previews and additional weapon tuning details. It'll be a fun time and hopefully we'll give you some things to chew on each week. We may even have a trailer or two uh, to share with you before launch. If you haven't been on social media the last week, you might have missed some bite-sized snippets of story. So that is a lot of stuff that's going to be covered in five weeks here. So I assume I'm going to be doing one of these live readings every week because there will always be something significant. Uh, we are not starting with blues. It doesn't seem power. So let's kick things off with power and where your guardian will stand when it's time to embark on the on embark on the witch queen's campaign the power is yours in the realm of destiny power is not only a measurement of your guardian's general abilities but a consistent gauge uh, for players on whether or not they'll be able to tackle a given challenge while the witch queen won't feature a big overhaul to the ways in which you'll gain power we do have some general updates coming on launch day to get returning and new players up and ready for a fresh campaign First, let's talk some definitions. Some of you may know these by heart but we're always excited to introduce new lights and returning players to information like this Floor, the lowest possible power for a piece of gear, starting point for new characters. Soft cap, the point at which general drops stop being automatic upgrades. Powerful gear drops are now the best way to gain power. This sounds like a blue related thing to me. <laughs> power cap, the point at which powerful drops stop being upgrades. Pinnacle gear drops are now the only way to gain power. Hard cap, max possible power from pinnacle drops, ignoring artifact power. Starting on February 22nd, the power floor will be up dated to 1350. Any player who signs in will be at appropriate power levels to start the Witch Queen campaign, even if they've taken a break recently from the game. Not super surprised about that. That seems like it'll be kind of necessary, although it makes current grinding kind of pointless. <laughs> but that's fine. Um, I figured they weren't just going to keep logging people into 1100 forever, uh, because that is kind of an exhausting grind to expect new players to do, especially if they just want to hop in and do the Witch Queen. Through general gameplay, players can reach the soft cap of 1,500. Oh, wow. So that's so they're doing another big jump. Um, at least, I think at least 200. I think if that's the soft cap. Through, uh, by earning general gear through activity completions, chests, and more. This includes rare and legendary drops. So blue drops are not being erased entirely. Once reaching the soft cap, players will need to earn powerful drops from vendor challenges and other objectives in the game. Once reaching the power cap, 1550 okay so there's a 50 grind in the actual expansion of uh, where powerfuls will get you from 1500 to 1550. the only upgrades the players will find from end game activities that offer pinnacle awards your final stretch to the hard cap of 1560 with your raids trials iron banner other end game pve sources so that all sounds like kind of what they normally do for an expansion that like you just get a bunch of uh eight power increases through random drops then you do the the powerful grind, then the pinnacle grind. I think that's exactly how it worked with Beyond Light, I'm pretty sure. There will be some adjustments to pinnacle and powerful sources as these shift yearly to focus on uh, newer seasonal content and fresh Destiny 2 expansion content offered by the Witch Queen. Keep an eye on tooltips as you start completing activities as they'll specifically note the different types of rewards that they offer. We have no doubts that our more eager players will create guides within a week of launch, but we hope that the power climb is fairly easy to understand once you get your boots on the ground February 22nd. Designing an economy is easy, right? Short answer, absolutely not. Nothing in game design is easy, especially while tackling various currencies and exchanges Destiny 2 offers. This week we'll be diving in with economy feature lead Joshua Kalinske speaking to some exciting changes on behalf of the team. Here we go. Joshua, beginning in the Witch Queen, blue rare rewards will stop dropping from playlist activities Crucible Strikes Gambit once players have reached the soft cap. Players above the soft cap 1500 power will instead see a slightly increased chance at receiving legendary 
uh, rewards from these activities or a small amount of legendary shards. Blue weapons and armor will continue to drop from enemies and chests while playing Destiny 2, but we hope that this will reduce the need for players to manage their inventories and reduce the frequency of visits to the Postmaster when running activities. Mm. Mm, don't love it. I don't know. I don't think that's good enough. I wanted an auto dismantle, and this is only in playlist activities. So, does this mean they will stop dropping at like the end of a Crucible or Striker Gambit match, or they will still drop? They'll still drop from enemies and chests. So, will they still drop at the end chests? Will they survive from killing enemies even in the playlists? And then they will still drop in raids and stuff randomly in dungeons when you're playing. Hmm. That's I. It's not good enough. I don't think that's good enough. Uh. That might not be the end, but mm, I don't know. Not, not not overjoyed with that. We have some work ahead of us when it comes to rarity as a subject in Destiny 2. While Blue Gear helps players increase their power earlier in the game, we want to look at their place in the overall game. We aren't expecting any major changes in the next few seasons, but we'll be spending some time behind the scenes thinking about the future of rare drops all up. So they are going to do more stuff, but... and I, So this change is coming with the Witch Queen, right? Okay. So... That's, uh, I don't know. That's kind of like the barest of bare minimum I think they could do. Like, they didn't change it so blues don't go to your postmaster. They didn't have an auto dismantle option. They did not have blue stop dropping at soft cap, the hard cap, pinnacle cap, any cap. Um, I, I don't think that's a great solution. This seems like, like, I had, I was trying to, like, manage expectations, but... I don't think this is enough, and I'm I'm especially curious if like this literally sounds like the only thing that will change is like you won't get two blues every time you finish a crucible match or a gambit match or something like that. I think they'll still drop from uh, you know killing enemies and playlists and stuff, and they will still be clogging up your inventory and postmaster and everything like that. So I'm a little disappointed with that result. Uh, it says that they are going to keep an eye on them, but. No major changes in the next few seasons, so it's another year of things being very close to where they are. I don't love that. Uh, okay. Gunsmith Reputation. I feel like I've lost the war. I'm sorry, guys. I tried. I really did. <laughs> Gunsmith Reputation. Banshee44 is getting a new reputation system that matches the other vendors in the tower, such as Zavala and Shax. This means we are removing some of the items that were previously associated with Gunsmith, rep uh, Gunsmith Reputation, namely Gunsmith Materials and Weapon Telemetries. Players will now earn reputation rank progress with Banshee44 with dismantling legendary and exotic <laughs> weapons and armor or by completing daily Gunsmith bounties. Uh, you want to turn everything in before February 22nd because this whole system is changing. We will also be removing mod components from the game. That is very good news. That is long overdue, and that frees up a bunch of slots in inventory. That is a, that is good news. Starting in the Witch Queen, weapon and armor mods sold by Banshee44 and 801 respectively will no longer require mod components to purchase once that costs 10,000 glimmer. Furthermore, as part of the update, we are increasing the number of mods available on each vendor to at a single time from 2 to 4. Before we move on, if you notice, uh, noted that all ghost mods that generated weapon telemetries will be removed as they no longer serve a purpose. Oh wait, so yeah, weapon telemetries are gone too. Uh, yeah, weapon telemetries have been pointless for years, like pretty much always, like <laughs> since they existed. Uh, Rahul's taking over. As we mentioned in the past, Master Rahul will be in inheriting Spider's material exchange duties in the Witch Queen. Exchange rates should match what you know from Spider for now, but these services are being shifted to the tower as the Tangled Shore will soon be off the Mystic Guardians. In addition, Rahul will be picking up some of the wares that Banshee44 and 801 once offered, specifically the Insale of Enhancement Prisms and Ascended Shards. As noted above, this makes space for more mods to be available for purchase in a given week. Rahul will offer these materials at the same price as Banshee44 and 801 once sold them. Yeah, I don't think we need like two or three vendors selling that. That doesn't really make sense. Uh, as a final note, before we move on to some exotic news, Master Rahul will be able to uh, will also be able to decrypt umbral engrams, so players uh, will not have to hop between the helm and tower to de decrypt all the engrams in the inventory. Focusing for individual seasonal weapons and armor will live on in seasonal vendors in the helm going forward. So if you want to focus on a specific weapon from a given season, you'll still need to head into the helm for decryption. Uh, okay. I feel like I need to tweet about blues, even as I'm recording this video. It just it, I'm just so sad about it. I'll just tweet really quick here. <laughs> I already know what gif I want to use. 
Where is it? I know it's on here. There we go. All right, go on Twitter and check it out and see if you agree. All right. <laughs> Sorry, I know I have like 50 bazillion people in my mentions asking me for my reaction, so <laughs> tweet break mid-video here. All right, Hawk Moon and Dead Man's Tale. As of February 22nd, 2022, the Harbinger and Presage Exotic missions will no longer be accessible. The team still wanted to preserve the ability for players to obtain random rolls of these weapons. Therefore, instead of adding these items to the Monument to Lost Lights, as we have done with most of our previous exotics that no longer have sources, these two weapons will show up as part of Xur's inventory each weekend. Uh, okay, I guess that makes sense. It's like an interim fix. Um, oh, I get it. Okay, so every week he's going to have a unique role for Hawkmoon and Dead Man's Tale. That's kind of interesting. All right, I like that. Um, and you need this all this stuff to buy them. Ascendant Shard, Exotic Cipher. Jeez, hefty. <laughs> that is no joke. Wait, before you go, what about those exotic catalysts? Oh, that's something fun. The Hawkmoon, DMT, and Aegir Scepter catalysts will be moved to the playlist activity... Completions. In addition to these three, we have also added the ability for three catalysts that have been absent from Destiny 2 to drop from playlist activities as well. Okay, so they're finally bringing back these ones. Hawkmoon, Dumbass Sail, Aegers, Outbreak, Whisper, Fourth Horseman. Okay, so these were the ones that were missing that everyone was like, where did they go? Are they ever coming back? So all you just have to do is do playlist activities now. Um, and they, you don't have to play those old activities because you can't because they're sunset. So I assume it's just going to be number of kills. All right, raid dates. Uh, the Witch Queen Redacted Raid, so I'm giving the name, March 5th, 2022, so that is two weeks after launch-ish around there. I assume that's uh, Saturday? Yeah, Saturday Raid. So that is what they've been doing lately, giving people plenty of time to power up, no race, no, um, you know, there's going to be contest mode, so you can't overlevel for it anyway. Uh, now you can get those time requests in, <laughs> do your homework, all that stuff. Uh, and we might be through kind of the the bulk of this here. Uh, we have Movie of the Week, Journey Witch Queen. That was a good trailer, actually. Um, art. And a quick clarification before we go. Okay, oh, this is about bounty stuff. Uh, people were trying to figure out whether or not Iron Banner bounties will be removed at the end of the season. It was discovered that we had a slight error published to the website. I wanted to take a moment to set ex expectations on what is being removed. Iron Banner bounties will not be removed at the end of the season. Bounties acquired and completed at any point during the season will be retained after the Witch Queen releases. Note, bounties retained from Seasonal Loss will be capped at 1350 power and will not give players any bonus power. They will be removed at the end of Season 16, as Saladin will be taking his turn in our rollout uh, of vendor reworks. Uh, okay, wait, so is Iron Banner... Is that's 16 the season after Witch Queen? So that's when Iron Banner is being fixed? Uh, final note, final Iron Banner of the season will be during the final week of Season of the Lost. Um, seasonal bounties will be removed at the end of the season. Bounties from the Tangled Shore will be removed. Yeah, that makes sense. And then some daily bounties um, may be removed. So some Drifter and Gunsmith bounties. Uh, alongside our vendor reward. Did we just confirm Drifter is getting a pass? Well, that shouldn't be a surprise. We are tanking with Gambit in Season 16. More on that in a future twat. Right, wait, is... Are we in Season 15? This is Season 15 right now. So Season 16 is... Is Witch Queen. I think that's right. Okay, so Iron Banner is being reworked. Uh, actually, wait, I can't tell what this means. This might be during 16 or after, and then Gambit is getting reworked in season 16. Rule of thumb, if you don't want to lose your rewards, you, we recommend you turn in your bounties before New Year Destiny hits uh, servers. While you're looking to rake up your artifact a bit faster than others, we expect many of your mod unlocks to come from cleaning the campaign and jumping into quest activities uh, afterwards. Take your time, you unlock all the goodies, we have no doubts. So they will still be good for XP, so if you really care about that, uh, go for it. Okay. So I, I'm disappointed. I am. Um, I think there was just a lot of kind of bare minimum stuff they could have done with blues. And this is somehow below even that. I don't think just removing blues from the, the playlist is good enough. Uh, I get that economies are complicated and nothing is easy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But like, if they have built a system where they cannot like integrate a behavior that's like do not have blues go to the postmaster or do not drop blues if player is above x power like 
I, I know it, it's not that simple, like a line of code doing that. And yet I, I really believe this is such a pervasive, annoying problem where literally pretty much it's once a year where blues are remotely useful during times like this, where the 1350 to 1500 grind, yeah, you can use blues as like an upgrade during that time for like a couple hours until you get to that level. But that for me is not enough reason to keep blues. And it is not very reassuring to me that their next kind of bigger look at blues is going to be, uh, you know, several seasons from now. And they want, you know, to think about the future of rares and like the ship has sailed on rares. Like you have built this entire system around legendary roles and exotics. And I do not think we need some sort of like grand ground up rework of like white screens and blues to like go back to like a, a more ranked system. And I, I think the game is going to suffer in the interim. This is not solving issues about pushing things out of the postmaster um it, like they even are acknowledging that's a problem here so i this is not it as they say uh so i i'm not really celebrating this kind of like five percent of a victory here but um gunsmith stuff i guess we'll i kind <laughs> of have spun fun spending i don't know twenty thousand gunsmith materials or whatever i have now i'll probably do a, a live thing of that Grooving tele telemetry and stuff and stuff in mod components should have happened like two years ago, at least three years ago. Uh, and yeah, I'm, I'm certainly curious about all the other stuff that's listed here. I think a lot of the other tops will be more substantive than this, um, given all of the stuff that we still have to cover. Um, that is a, a whole bunch of stuff, but uh, sorry, I failed you. I did not effectively kill blues and there is still uh, a long way to go here. But anyway, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care.